this week, our My Foggy Stuff mashup is all about American Girl. Aww. We have gathered some of our favorite American Girl crafts. From our American Girl room tour to our rainforest dollhouse. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Here is a quick craft. I am going to make a kite for a doll using pipe cleaners, recycled paper, tissue paper, a toothpick or a wooden dowel, thread, and glue. I start by cutting the fluff off of a pipe cleaner. Measure a wooden dowel or toothpick to the doll's hand, cut, sand the rough edges, wrap the pipe cleaner around the toothpick or wooden dowel, needle nose pliers can be used to curl over the ends, and I made sure the end was wrapped around at least two to three times. Then used more pipe cleaner to hold it securely in place. Fold over a piece of tissue paper, cut a slanted triangle on the fold, cut thin strips of recycled paper, glue them crossing onto the tissue paper, trim off the excess, put a small drop of glue in the center, place the pipe cleaner into the glue, cut small rectangles out of the tissue paper, gently twist them, to make a bow, then glue them on to a piece of string. Glue the string to the bottom, gently crease it down the center and across the top. I can even make one using string for when the kite is not in use. Use a clear rubber band to hold the kite in the doll's hand and you're done. Happy crafting! I was in Target the other day when I found this. It is a 24 inch horizontal stackable organizer and I thought that with a few adjustments it would make a great 18 inch doll bed. It comes unassembled so you'll need an adult to partially put it together. Because if you assemble it without the top it makes a great wooden bed at a fraction of the cost. Now how about some easy doll bedding using pillowcases. But first, to make a mattress, I take an old towel and fold it into a size that will fit the bed. Then I place it inside a pillowcase and fold in the sides so it's nice and neat. And now you have a nice soft mattress. Use another pillowcase as a comforter, add a few small pillows, and you're done. Well, that's great and all, but how do you make the pillows? These are no-sew doll pillows. We use small bits of fleece, but felt works just as well, ribbon, and pillow fluff. Take a piece of fleece and fold it up about halfway, then apply some hot glue. Take the top portion, fold it down on top of that glue, and be careful not to uh, burn yourself, and then make sure you didn't just glue it to the other side. Once it dries, Apply a line of glue on one end, lightly stuff it, seal up the open end with hot glue, trim the edges until they're neat, then glue on ribbon for some added detail. And that's it. going to make a doll room inspired by the American Girl Rainforest House using a 36 by 48 inch trifold, scrapbook paper, fabric, an empty oatmeal container, beads, buttons, a bottle cap, a hanger, acrylic paint, empty boxes, extra cardboard, recycled paper board, rope or twine, bamboo skewers or wooden dowels, recycled paper, and glue. I start by placing the doll on the trifold. Draw a line for the height of the ceiling, 
find the center of the cardboard, draw a triangle on top that leaves enough cardboard to make the doll's bed. Open the trifold and draw lines extending out to the sides. Draw a window, cut on the line drawn, and always have adult supervision when working with sharp objects. To make the basic structure for the house, cover with paper. I covered the outside with a wood grain paper. And when covering the corners, I make sure the cardboard is folded before gluing on the paper. This will allow me to open and close the trifold without tearing the paper. On the inside, glue on scrap of paper for wallpaper. Glue on strips of paper for trim. Cut a piece of cardboard to fit in the trifold. Cover with paper for the floor. Cut strips of cardboard to extend past the side wall. Cut another piece for the other side that overlaps the wall just a little. Cover the cardboard with paper, take fabric, and I'm recycling an old scarf that has seen better days. Cut two long pieces of fabric, glue the long strip of cardboard onto the side, glue the fabric onto the other side of the cardboard, glue on the small piece of cardboard to make a curtained walkway. Take the leftover cardboard from the top of the trifold, measure, and cut out a rectangle of cardboard with about an inch and a quarter extra. Carefully score on the line so the cardboard can bend. Cut at least three more smaller rectangles. For the smaller rectangles, I want them to bend on the side and to be slightly shorter than the larger rectangle. Cover with paper. I covered front and back and just avoided the corner. Apply glue to the back of the folded side, starting with the smaller rectangles Glue them to the back wall, then glue the large rectangle right above so that it can rest on top. And I only glued the cardboard to the back wall so the pieces can fold up when not in use. Sew together rectangles of fabric to make bedding. And we use a small piece of a knit fabric for a throw at the bottom of the bed. Remove one side from an empty box, trace around it on a piece of paperboard, giving it a little extra room. Extend the lines out to the sides, make small cuts to make a rectangle with tabs. Fold over the tabs, glue the sides together using scrap pieces of paper to make a lid. Cover with paper to make a basket that we can store under the bed. Remove the paper from an empty oatmeal container Sketch a half circle at the bottom, trim off the excess, cover with paper, roll recycled paper around a bamboo skewer, add more paper to make it stronger, cut four the same size, cover with paper, glue the paper tubes underneath, add smaller pieces of cut paper tubes for support. Cut a circle of cardboard, cover with felt and fabric, glue it in place, glue on rope for trim, to make a chair. Draw a wobbly shape on a piece of paperboard, cut it out, trace it, cut several, then stack and glue them together, glue a wood grain scrap of paper on top, glue on paper tubes to make a table. Glue scrap of paper on the side wall, glue on plastic caps, buttons, and beads, and I'm using the top from a gumball machine container and the top from a bottle of liquid soap. Paint them, glue a button to the cap, glue it onto the wall for a shower. I stacked and glued a couple of pieces of cardboard covered with paper and glued it to the side to make a shelf to hold travel size body wash and a cut piece of a sock for a wash rag. Cut and stack layers of cardboard Glue them together to make two sides, a back and a shelf. Cover with paper, glue the back and sides together, glue in the shelf, cut bamboo skewers, glue them together, then paint, glue it in place to make a grill. And what is really fabsome about this grill is that we made it large enough to hold a cell phone. We took a recording of a campfire to give the illusion like the grill is working. Completing the basic construction for our doll room. Now let's add some fun details. 
And what I love about creating our own doll room is that we can customize it to our style. Use an old calendar to give the window a scenic view. Use stickers to place butterflies around the room. We even placed one inside of a glitter jar for the dolls to study. Make a cork board out of scrap of paper and cardstock to display pictures. Add a tiny friend and you're done. Happy crafting! Rainforest House. Every year we like to do a special craft for the American Girl of the Year. Last year we made macaroons, I mean macarons with grapes. And that's when I learned they were called macarons and not macaroons. And this year we decided to make something a little larger. Like a house! We made a version of Leah's Rainforest House. Using cardboard, stickers, scrapbook paper, bamboo skewers, old cereal boxes, recycled homework, you know, all of our favorite stuff. And I think it turned out adorable. And we had to find a way to make it a little easier to store. So if we take everything out, we can lay it flat, fold over all the cardboard, Place all of the small accessories inside of the basket. Neatly place everything on top, and then it can be stored away until later, like under the bed or in a closet. Wow. I know, right? And that's why we only put the shower and other 3D accessories on one wall so that it could be folded down and not break things off. However, you still need to be careful not to, you know, break off the shower. Now let's set this back up. Ooh, you know what? The bed, it could also work as a large desk. Let's just place the chair right there. Fold up the blankets and pillows. Then load the desk up with lots of stuff. Gotta give her a lamp. Maybe she has like a generator or something in the back. Oh, how adorable is that? We have a Polaroid camera because she's into photography. There's little Froggy and Gabby, our dollhouse magazines, a couple of mini books, our doll tablet, which is a printable on our blog so that she can do some blogging and watch her favorite YouTube videos. <laughs> and yes, she has a cocoa latte in the middle of the rainforest. Hey, a cocoa latte is a survival essential and a snack. Oh, that reminds me, Bud Vine! We found these Safari Limited Fruits and Vegetables at Michael's. And they're regularly priced at, mm, I want to say $9.99. But if you have a coupon, you can get them like 40% off, which is what we did. And that's like an awesome price. And they are the perfect size for 18-inch dolls. And the Disney Animator Collection dolls. I tend to lump the Animator Collections and 18-inch, like American Girls, Journey Girls, all of them into the same group. They can all use pretty much like the same stuff. Excuse me, a what about us? Ooh, that's right. The 18 inch, I mean 17 inch Monster High dolls. They can fit this too. And their packaging says 17 inches. However, they really are the same height as an American Girl doll. So we can have tons of different dollies joining in on the fun. Now everybody Aww. clear out. I'm turning this back into the bedroom. All right, there we go. And I love that we used an old scarf for the curtains because it's already hemmed on the sides and it just has a great look. It's like gauzy. Oh, we forgot the little seashells. I have a few seashells from our family vacation and I'm gonna glue them right onto some jute or twine. 
with a little touch of hot glue. And remember to always have adult supervision when working with hot objects. Then I'm gonna take the top end and glue it behind. Brush them with a clear coat of nail polish. It really helps to make the colors pop. Then I can just hang it onto the doorway. Yay, I got my seashells. And finally, we have the grill. We use the same scrapbook paper that we used in our doll kitchen. You know, all of a sudden I have all these uses for it. And it gives the illusion that there is a little fire there. However, we love the idea of using a cell phone. Come on, that is cool, right? This project is so much fun! And we hope you have as much fun as we did making your own doll rainforest house. going to resize our doll sneakers for an 18 inch doll using a recycled cereal box, recycled paper, glue, fabric, tape, craft paint, ribbon, a needle and thread, or a sewing machine. I start by tracing the doll's foot onto a piece of cardboard from a cereal box. And I'm just going to round out the toe. Cut it out, flip it, and trace it. I take a piece of recycled paper and wrap it around the doll's leg. And I use a pencil to sketch out the side of the shoe. I want it to stop right before her toe, because of the toe cap is gonna go there. So I'm gonna stop right here and go down. That's the bottom of her foot, right about there. Turn it to the other side so that I get it at the top as well. Then I fold the paper over and match up my lines. Make a crease up the side and cut it out. Trace the front of the doll's foot onto a piece of paper, add a little extra around the sides, extend the middle portion all the way up, round off the top. Actually, I'm just gonna make it square. It'll be easier to sew if it's a square. Then take the sides in, cut it out to make my patterns. Trace the pattern for the cloth part of the shoe onto fabric, cut it out, but I leave just a little bit of extra space for a seam allowance. For each shoe, we cut the pattern twice, two for the back and then two for the tongue. And I'm gonna use a white lining on the inside of my shoe. With good side to good side, use pins to hold it in place. With a needle and thread, I sew on the line drawn with just a simple in and out stitch. Or I can use a straight stitch on a sewing machine. Leaving the bottom ends open. Remove the pins, trim off some of the excess, making small cuts in the corners and around the curved edges to release the tension. Flip it right side out, sew a straight top stitch around the edges, followed by a double stitch, followed by another double line curve on the sides. And before the curve was sewn, I very lightly sketched out a line to use as a guide. Trim off the excess strings, I traced the front of the foot pattern onto a piece of cardboard, and cut a thin strip of the cereal box that can fit all the way around. Glue the strip around the edge, and I glue the cardboard on top, making sure the doll's foot can still fit inside. Making sure that the unprinted cardboard is facing the doll's skin. Then I glue it around the sides, trim off the excess, make sure there's glue holding the two layers of fabric together. With the good side facing out, glue on the side of the shoe, and I like to start gluing from the center of the back so my shoe comes out even on both sides. Trim off the excess. I paint some of the leftover cereal box with craft paint. Once dry, we flip it over, trace around the shoe, cut it out, glue the cutout to the bottom, glue a piece of ribbon across the front for the toe cap, glue more ribbon going around the bottom edge. Using more ribbon to add details, take a piece of ribbon, wrap tape, around the end, use scissors to make small cuts going up the shoe, staying inside the sewn area. I begin lacing the shoes by putting the taped end of the ribbon through the hole, and you're done. Happy crafting!
are going to make a snack cart for a doll using a shoe box or a photo storage box, a plastic hanger, two different size straws, scrapbook paper, plastic from packaging, small coasters or plastic bottle caps, a printable from our blog, magnetic tape from recycled refrigerator magnets, wooden dowels, a fruit cup, craft paint, beads, cardboard, and glue. I start by making four small holes on the side of a photo storage box or a shoe box. I just need them big enough to fit the coasters. Gluing bottle caps to the bottom can also look like wheels. I put two more holes on the sides, big enough to fit a wooden dowel. Cut a circle out of the top of the box for the fruit cup. Paint the outside of the fruit cup and allow it to dry. You may need more than one coat. Begin covering the outside of the box with scrapbook paper. On the inside of the box, I begin drawing lines on the back to plan out my shelving. Using my design as a guide, I cut cardboard to fit the lines. Cover the sides of the cardboard that will be visible with scrapbook paper as well as inside the box. Once everything is covered, I begin gluing the cardboard into place. Cut pieces of cardboard to cover the unwanted spaces. Once all of the pieces are cut, glue them together, cover with scrapbook paper, trim off the excess, fold and glue the corners over the edge, glue it into place. To make a microwave, I am going to close in part of this box here with a piece of cardboard. Cut it down to size, then measure and cut another piece to box it in. Cover the cardboard with paper. To make the control panel for the microwave, I am going to use alphabet beads for the buttons. I even made it into a fun message. Use scrap of paper for the display. Glue them into place. Measure and cut another piece of cardboard for the door, leaving it a little longer on one side so that I can cut out a small notch at both ends. Draw and cut a rectangle from the center, cover with scrapbook paper, cut out the center, bolt the paper over the edge, cover the back side to clean the edges, cut a piece of clear plastic, glue it to the back, glue the end to a thin straw, cut two small pieces of a larger straw, slide them over the ends, then glue only the large straws to the box. To make a door, that can open. To help the door stay closed, I cut two small pieces of magnetic tape and glue them on. Make another door for the refrigerator. Cut leftover pieces of clear plastic, glue several sheets together at the corners, trim the edges with scrapbook paper, then glue it inside to be a glass shelf for the refrigerator. Attach the door just like the microwave. Glue on leftover pieces of a straw for a handle. Cover the top with scrapbook paper. Recut the hole out of the center. Glue the painted fruit cup into the hole. Cut the hook off of a plastic hanger. Glue it above the fruit cup with two beads to make a sink. Push the wooden dowels through the holes we made earlier. Glue into place, then glue another wooden dowel across. Push the coasters into place. I use the cap from an old glue stick and one of our can label printables to cover the top of the coasters. And remember, if you don't have coasters, you can use a bottle cap to look like wheels. Cut out the menu for the printables, glue it to the front, add a few items from previous videos like how to make doll carnival food and the concession stand. We use a single serving of ice cream for a doll sized tub of ice cream and you're done. Happy crafting! to decorate this space for an American Girl room using some of our previous crafts. This is a room out of the My Girls dollhouse and we are going to start decorating it one room at a time because right now it's, it's pretty much a mess. 
Most of the rooms look something like this. Just overflowing with stuff. So we are going to go one room at a time, cleaning it out, and fixing it up. So let's get started. Starting with an empty room, we are going to change the wall color. So I am going to cover them with scrapbook paper. And using a glue stick, I am just gluing this directly onto the wall and smoothing it out so there's no bubbles. I used a light blue damask on the top, a textured blue on the bottom, then I added some paper with a wood grain trim around the middle and the window. And now we have our room. And another option for creating your American Girl room is to use a large box or one of my personal favorites, a trifold. Okay, so now we need a bed. And this is our version of the bouquet bed made with an American Girl box. And I would really like to put it like this against the wall. I might want a nightstand right there, so I'm just gonna scoot it over a little. Here is our doll dresser with working drawers. Yeah, they're a little crooked. <laughs> but, and you know, and I actually don't like the color that we use for the dresser now. It doesn't really go. So I have to recover it. I could have used the same paper, but I like a little variation in the room. Then we made a small one without the drawers to be a bookcase on the other side. And I've got a few mini books that I've bought, like these American Girl notebooks, and a few that I've made. Add a few knickknacks, and our desk lamp. Above the bed, we added an American Girl drawing pad, our Polaroid camera, a teapot with flowers, one of our cell phones from our doll selfie stick video, and right now, I'm just adding a whole bunch of fun details, like keys from our doll wallet video, a trophy, ooh, a guitar is a fun detail, and keychains are fun. Can you open this for me? Sure. Please be stitch. You gotta tear it on the side, the little notch. <laughs> All right, there we go. Come on, Stitch, Olaf. come on. Olaf, eh, well, that'll work too. So I just remove the hardware to make a fun little figurine for the doll's room. Aw, that's cute. We need a book bag. It will look better over here on the floor. Here is a little camera keychain, and it actually lights up and makes little noises. Maybe our doll is into photography. I am going to use a knit doily as a rug, our doll house slippers. I glued some burlap onto a piece of cardboard, glued some skinny sticks around it, glue on some buttons, add a little poster putty to the back for a jewelry holder. I can even use a push pin to add a picture. Add some art from our doll art room video. It's looking pretty good. However, this wall is kind of bare. So I'm going to add our printable door from our doll townhouse video, and our printable light switch, and outlets. Outlets are such a fun little detail. And I think this is good, so uh, I think we're done. Let's see how Gabby likes her new room. Oops, forgot the horse. And a personal touch. So Gabby, what do you think? I love it! What a cute little horse. I just did all that work and all she takes from it is the horse. Well, we hope you enjoyed taking a look around our American Girl doll room. I am going to make a bed for an 18 inch doll using the doll's box scrapbook paper, cardboard, and glue. And the fun part about this project is that we are gonna build the frame of the bed around the box so that the box is not damaged or altered. I start by measuring the cardboard to the box. I cut four long strips, glue two together, cover with paper to make the side rails. Then I measure a piece of cardboard to the height of a doll and a little wider than the width of the box. Cut it out to make a long rectangle. Repeat to make two, then cut two more with the same width, only shorter. For the bottom of the bed, glue the long rectangles together, then the shorter ones. Cover them with paper to make a basic headboard and footboard. 
but let's take it a step further. Cut thin strips of cardboard, cover with paper, we glued three across the footboard and one along the top to add some architectural detail. Cut and cover a few more pieces of cardboard, begin gluing them to the top of the headboard to make an overhead storage unit. I glue two thin strips underneath that will stop at the top of the box. I glue another piece of cardboard underneath, then two small triangles underneath for support. Place the headboard at the top of the box, make a mark for the side rail, connecting the headboard to the footboard. And now the bed frame can be placed over the doll's box, allowing the box to support the weight of the doll. However, we don't want our doll's bed to look like a box, so let's make some bedding. Measure and cut a rectangle of fabric to fit over the sides of the box. Fold over and hem the edges, so when it's placed over the box and the bed frame is slid on top, it looks like a mattress and a bed skirt. I can sew a lace ruffle to the bottom to define the bed skirt. To make a simple pillow, I cut a square out of a piece of fabric. Cut a second one to match, lay them good side to good side, sew a straight line around the edge, leaving a small opening so it can be flipped inside out. Stuff with fluff and use a needle and thread to close the opening to make a basic pillow. Make long flat unstuffed pillows, glue them to the top of the headboard to make lined curtains. Make a large unstuffed pillow for a bedspread. Now we can add fun items to the shelving, like a candle from our How to Make a Doll Side Table and Chairs video, use a dollhouse teapot for a vase of flowers, add a journal, our Polaroid camera, a stuffed animal, a few pictures, and you're done. Happy crafting! joining us for this my froggy stuff mashup let us know in the comments down below what mashups you would like to see like comment share and subscribe follow us on instagram at my froggy stuff and the frog vlog and we will see you next time bye